there are apparently four independently owned franchises still operating in the United States, three of which are in Alaska, which actually makes a little bit of sense, because internet coverage is sparse up there, and without unlimited data, streaming has been expensive. And to listen to an employee at one of those stores, their very presence is almost magical. I have people who come into the parking lot just to take pictures of the building. People who come in and they'll walk around like... And you know that person hasn't been in a blockbuster in a long time. You can just tell because they'll also be like, oh my god, can't believe you guys are still here. <laughs> what a fun but potentially passive-aggressive interaction that was. <laughs> wow, I thought you has been losers have been thrown into the trash heap of history. But you weren't. Good for you. I'm off to stream literally anything I want. See you later, punchline. <laughs> But as internet coverage improves, those few remaining Alaskan blockbusters are under serious threat. If only there were a fun, movie-themed way for them to draw people in. You know, the way that Planet Hollywood sucks you in with the chance to dine alongside the baseball mitt that outacted Madonna in A League of Their Own, <laughs> or Patrick Swayze's clay erection from the movie Ghost, or Tom Cruise's original wife. You know, incredible pieces of movie history. The problem is, there is no way for a blockbuster in Alaska to get memorabilia like that. Or is there? Because a few weeks ago, you may remember that we told you about Russell Crowe, The Art of Divorce, an auction <laughs> in which, to celebrate the end of his marriage, he was selling artefacts from his career, from the gladiator chariot to this leather jockstrap he wore <laughs> in the film Cinderella Man, which was expected to attract an absolutely ridiculous $500. <laughs> Well, the auction took place last weekend, and you will be glad to know that no one paid $500 for that jock strap. One of the more curious items that went under the hammer was a leather groin protector used by Crow in the film Cinderella Man. It sold for $7,000 to a telephone bidder. It's not clear what they plan to use it for. Holy shit! $7,000! That is a big price to pay just to find out what Russell Crowe's ball smelled like in 2005. <laughs> I'm guessing lilacs with just a hint of spoiled venison. <laughs> now, now, you should know that there has been some speculation out there that we were the ones who bought that jockstrap. And I will admit, it does sound like something that we would do. <laughs> you know, buy Russell Crowe's jockstrap and send it to one of the last remaining blockbusters in Alaska. <laughs> Even that sentence is absolutely incredible to say out loud. <laughs> the bad news is, we didn't do it. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it wasn't us, we didn't buy it. We did, though. <laughs> Except we did. We absolutely did. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Now, what we didn't do, what we didn't do, what we did not do is buy anything else at that auction. <laughs> Except we did, though. <laughs> because what happened was, let me explain, it, it was 4 a.m. over here, and you know what happens when you start online shopping late at night? <laughs> you wake up the next day and you think, oh, shit, what did I just buy? Well, this was very much one of those times, because we didn't just get a jock strap. We got a bunch of pointless Russell Crowe memorabilia, <laughs> and I can think of no more fitting place for them to reside than an Alaskan blockbuster. So please, join me for a guided tour. <laughs> First, come with me. First, there is Russell Crowe's director's chair from the film American Gangster, a movie I'd completely forgotten he was in. But he obviously remembered because he not only took the back from his chair, he took the one from Denzel Washington's as well, which obviously we also bought. Now, <laughs> by, by the way, Denzel Washington's cost more than his. Now, you, you are probably thinking, well, do you have one of Russell Crowe's iconic movie costumes? You know, something uh, from the movie Gladiator? Well, no, but only because we got something even better. The vest he wore in Les Miserables. <laughs> oh, yes. A movie which Tacky Vest Weekly calls a triumph. And that's not the only costume, because we also got this hood that he wore in 2010's Robin Hood, which looks like something a circumcised penis would wear to administer a lethal injection. And finally, we all know that Russell Crowe... <laughs> here is to the manager of the only remaining blockbuster in Anchorage, Alaska, at 5600 DeBar Road, number 5. All of this shit is yours. <laughs> Just call us in the next 48 hours and we will send it to you.